Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to write a poem. I love poetry because you can convey such a specific sentiment in 300 words or less if the message is conveyed that poignantly. And the thing is, the message doesn't even need to be deep. It could be a poem about a great day at the beach, heartbreak, or even sex if that's what you want to write about, which I have. Poetry is my first love, my first tattoo ever. It's the one on my ribs. It is a quote from this is Sylvia Plath poem. And I was 19 when I got that. The poem is called the Mad Girl's Love Song. And it's like my favorite poem to this day. Well, one of them. I love poetry. I have been writing it for years in all different styles. And that brings me to tip number one of writing poetry. And that is to read poetry. You want to learn the styles of poems that resonate most with you, and that's two facets. The content of the poem, but also the style in which it's written. If you read a poem you like, don't be afraid to replicate it in your own style because it's kind of like shopping. If you follow certain people on social media, you might imitate like their vibe, but over time, you're going to learn your own vibe in that process. Similarly, in the beginning of your poetry journey, you will try on different voices and see which ones stick. Read different poets, absorb what you like from their work. Your own work will be an amalgamation of everything you read and enjoy, but with your own twist. Everything I'm talking about, I actually recommend reading this book called Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon, because it kind of talks about this concept and if you can't get access to the book, I recommend listening to the TED Talk, which I will link in the video description. Tip number two in writing a poem is to think about your poem topic. And as I said, it doesn't need to be deep. It literally can be anything. So don't put pressure on yourself into thinking, is this worthy of a poem? Don't put pressure on yourself at all, especially if you're new to writing poetry. Now, I put pressure on myself because I have been doing this for a long time and I expect a high level for myself. Even then, you should remove those expectations because you should enjoy the writing process it's supposed to be fun now granted if you're writing about like trauma or heartbreak it might not be so fun because you're going to relive that trauma to write about it but in the end it feels cathartic to create art from your pain yeah i think that epitomizes art creation overall i feel satisfied when i create something beautiful out of something terrible step number three in writing a poem and this is especially important if you're new to poetry and that is that you should journal because you need to get your thoughts on the page before you try to create art out of them what are the details you remember what are the specific moments you need to get your thoughts on the page before you try to disentangle them and the journaling should be sloppy like don't be afraid to do run on sentences or even like use bullet points literally it doesn't matter wherever your mind takes you follow those tangents because these are the details that you're going to pull from when you actually try to write the poem i also like this step because sometimes i conceptualize an idea for a poem but the actual thoughts they're like circulating in my head so i have to organize them and i lose track of them because i remember so many things at once so if i just get it down then when i'm writing the poem it'll be easier for me to recall everything the steps two and three you have your topic and you have the details of the topic that you want to talk about but step number four is to figure out what your theme and overall message is going to be because if you don't know what your destination is you won't be able to get there for example let's say you're writing about heartbreak or your last relationship what is your point what are you trying to tell readers are you trying to tell them that you fell for someone that you didn't actually know or are you trying to tell them that this person Person hurt you, deceived you, lied to you, but in the end, you're still heartbroken and you're still not over them. Is it going to be that you are a stronger, better person because of this, or you are still suffering? Like, you need to know what your theme is going to be because you have all these thoughts from the journaling, but you need to know what you're going to pull from. To drive this point home, I am going to read two poems that I have written so I can prove to you how I knew where I was going when I wrote the poem, and you will see that in the end. This poem is called A Beautiful Day, looking at my computer. I spend sunrise on the porch, espresso in my left hand and a novel in my right. My cat purrs and nuzzles my ankle while the wind brushes the hair off my face, allowing me to admire the dandelion peony sky. I listen to the song of autumn, scattered mustard leaves crunching beneath a squirrel's scurry to an acorn, harmonizing with a mockingjay's hums as a butterfly perches atop my mug, flapping its kaleidoscope wings, colored like the fragments of my soul. The sun continues to rise, tickling my skin with each inch. Morning dew sparkles atop daffodils and daisies. I revel in my birthright of nature's simple pleasure, pleasures. How blessed I am to live such a wondrous life, 
in such a wondrous world. So much beauty around me and within me. Yet all I can think about is a boy who won't text me back. So in this poem, I was inspired. <laughs> I think I wrote this like, I don't know, two years ago. I remember who I wrote it though, but I'm not gonna disclose that. Anyway, I wrote this because I was thinking about how like it was such a beautiful day. Nature was naturing, but all I could think about was this guy. So I had the idea for the poem and I wanted my reader in the end to be like so taken aback because when you read the first half, like literally every line until the last one, you just think it's going to be this lovely poem about nature. But then that's why that final line is so stark because you don't expect it. I'm going to get into like how I wrote that poem later on in the tips, but basically I use a lot of imagery there so the reader could really feel the beauty around me and then I just subverted that perception in the end. So now we will move on to another poem where I knew where I was going. This poem is, um, did I name this one? The Hardest Goodbye. It's called The Hardest Goodbye. So I'm going to read that one now. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to miss your large blue eyes piercing into mine whenever I called your name and cuddled you while I ran my fingers through your hair. My sweet and gentle boy, your body heat warmed me whenever you curled your head into my chest, rising and falling as your lids fluttered shut. My heart aches when I look at every picture and video I took with you. The most handsome I've met, I refuse to delete you because I don't want to forget you. I wish I didn't need to say goodbye. I wish I could have felt your love and loved you forever. I wish you didn't belong to someone else because in spite of our connection, you were never mine. I have loved and lost many bad men, but what differenti differentiates my latest is that this bad man owns a dog as precious as you and leaving him means I will be leaving you too. So in this one, I had the idea, um, again, this was about a guy I was seeing who had a really cute dog and the guy was kind of an asshole, but in the end I was like, damn, I'm really gonna miss this dog. So I had the idea that I write a poem and the you in the poem is the dog. So I wanted readers to think like for the first half that I was writing about a guy. I built up that suspense by saying, I have loved and lost many bad men. So that should further make the reader think that this poem was about a guy. But then in the last line I say, no, I'm really gonna miss this dog. The implicit message here, what I really wanted to convey was that this guy was not that special, but his dog was, he had a very unique dog. The readers would think that he meant something, but in the end he was very average. And both of these poems, um, the first one and the second one, I knew where I was taking it. I knew what I was writing about because I knew how I wanted to end them. Once you figure out your theme, where you wanna go with the poem, that brings us to step number five. And step number five is detail. Because as we can see in both of these poems, I provided rich detail that would be palpable to readers. Some poems take an abstract route, but I like to use the senses. Taste, smell, touch, sound. Um, I feel like I just forgot one. Smell, taste, smell, sound, touch. See, <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm filming this later in the day. But yeah, you wanna use all the senses. Think about your topic and try to recall what details struck you in the moment. But most importantly, every detail must serve a purpose. So let's say you're talking about a great first date. Maybe you'd wanna talk about the conversation that you and your date had or what you both wore, or the food you ate. You also might want to write a line about the restaurant to set the vibe. Was it a casual restaurant or was it a fancy restaurant? However, you might not want to describe what the couple next to you look like or what the waiter looked like because that doesn't necessarily serve a purpose. Like sure, you can think of every detail you remember, but like I said, the details should serve a purpose for the overall theme because poetry, it really is about being concise. You don't want your poem to be bloated, full of details that are useless. You are writing a poem, not a short story or a novel, so only include what's relevant. And now that brings me to point seven, and that is literary elements. This might take you back to high school because you probably did learn a little bit about literary elements. You probably know what similes and metaphors are, Similes are when you use comparison um, words, connecting them like or as. So maybe you, if you're excited to see someone or they're excited to see you, you could say, 
his eyes lit up like a fresh light bulb. And the metaphor is more direct. It's a direct comparison. So maybe you wanna talk about how your ex-boyfriend was extremely gluttonous. So you say, my ex-boyfriend was a garbage disposal. Now, I actually think I talked about this in my video from like last year, but you don't wanna add a bunch of similes and metaphors just because you think that sounds artsier or like you're a better writer. Actually, that's the sign of like a newbie writer. We call that purple prose because you're not getting to the point. Like the purpose for similes and metaphors is to make the reader understand your points clearer. Like the comparison is supposed to serve a purpose. You don't just wanna throw in a bunch of similes and metaphors because you think it sounds artsy. Do not do that. If you are gonna use similes or metaphors, just limit the amount and always keep your end goal in sight. So refer back to what I said before about the theme. Is this simile and metaphor going to help drive home your theme or are you just adding it because you think it sounds pretty? An example for what I mean when I say that your similes and metaphors should serve a purpose is let's say your date looked at you with adoration like just the look in his eyes and you want to express that it would be useful to say he looked at me like a child watching the fourth of july fireworks if that's the theme of the poem this amazing first date it would not be useful to say the waiter dined on us like we were a-list celebrities because that's not your theme it's not driving home how your connection with this person was. If your theme were that you were writing a poem about how you scored a successful man, then that simile would serve utility. But since that's not the theme, it is going to bog down your poem and just make it sound clunky. So be careful with similes and metaphors. We don't want to distract our readers from our overall message. They should finish the poem understanding exactly what you were portraying. On the topic of things I dislike, this is a great segue for number seven. And number seven is to avoid cliches. What are cliches, you ask? Cliches are common expressions and analogies. They're not original, you've heard them before, and that's why you are regurgitating them because they are etched in your mind. Your poem won't be as impactful if you use cliches because if you're writing something you've already heard, that means that your readers have heard it too, and we wanna create unique um, writing that stays with the readers long after they read it. You want to invoke rich emotions that really resonate with them. Some examples are read between the lines, head over heels, time flies, writing on the wall, and no, you do not want to use those. If you think of a cliche, ask yourself how you can express that sentiment in your own words. Maybe if I wanted to say read between the lines, I would say like, her body spoke the words that her mouth didn't. That's unique. I've never heard that. I mean, I just came up with it on the spot. You could even say that better. But also for head over heels, you wouldn't want to say crazy in love because that's another cliche. You also want to be careful with similes and metaphors because we do have a bunch of common ones like hungry like a wolf, brave like a lion. No, think of a different way to convey that emotion. Think outside the box. And that is a cliche. So actually that's a challenge for you. Think of different ways to say, think outside the box. The moral here is that poetry is an art. Your writing should sound fresh and new, not like something that someone heard on the street. Tip number eight is technique. And there is a lot to cover here. Like this is probably something that you would learn in a college course, but that's why I recommend that you read a lot of poetry because you will familiar, familiarize yourself with a lot of different and technique. Choosing the technique for your poem is kind of an intuitive process, so you won't know which technique is right for your poem if you haven't um, exposed yourself to a lot of poetry variations. I have written many poems in what you call a stream of consciousness, in which it's one long stanza, each line flows into the next, no pause, because I want my readers to read it all, absorb it all, and then let that ending marinate. But then I've also written poems that are separate individual stanzas, like the poems that I read before, those two poems, those were each different stanzas. In poems with separate stanzas, each stanza contains its own thoughts, so I wanted those to stand alone. Sometimes I rhyme with a set rhyme scheme pattern. Other times I throw in an arbitrary rhyme just because it sounds good with the last line. And then other poems, I don't rhyme at all. You can experiment, but don't be rigid in your approach. If you start the poem with one idea, but then your mind goes somewhere else, follow that. You can always rework the poem as long as you keep working on it. Another technique tip to get you started is repetition. So choose a line or pair of lines that you like and build each stanza around that. So maybe you would start each stanza with a certain line and then the stanza would elaborate on that. Maybe if you're writing a love poem, you can start each stanza with, I knew you loved me when, and then you write like certain details in each stanza of specific moments that really capture the feeling of love. Or 
maybe you want to start each stanza with a heartwarming and notable story, um, like the memory of the moment, and then end the stanza with, because you loved me. So that would be the ending of each stanza. Or maybe you want to write a heartbreak poem. Start each stanza with, I should have ran when, and each stanza would express a different red flag. Here's some ideas for you. Anyway, you don't need to use repetition, but I do think it's useful for poetry beginners because it gives you a base, something to work around and build your poem off of. So the next poetry tip, um, I don't remember what we're up to, but I think it was nine. Yeah, it's aesthetic. And this is kind of hard for me to explain because I didn't pack all my poetry books with me and I literally have like probably over 20. But when I say aesthetic, I mean how the poem looks on the page. So it's difficult for me to talk about, but someone who is known for his poetry aesthetics is E.E. E. Cummings. He's very hit or miss for me. Like people either love or hate him. I like some of his stuff, but I think a lot of the poems the dude did just want to be artsy and avant-garde. We can talk about one of his poems, A Leaf Falls on Loneliness, because it's a visual representation representation of a leaf. In the last line, Ines, I-N-E-S-S, -E -S, stands alone because with the words like I-ness. So he's really writing about loneliness and we can see that with the parentheses. So that's actually one poem that I think really does drive home the point. Now for me personally, I don't really make shapes on the page the way some poets do. My poems are more uniform um, the way they sit on the page, but I like them to be even. I like them to be all on the same line. So I need to decide whether the poem is going to be half of the page or one fourth of the page. That'll decide like how I break up each sentence because I, I like it to be even, or at least like mostly even, like if it's a, one line is like slightly longer, that's fine. But I wouldn't want all the lines to be like one fourth and you have one random line. Like I said, that could be something that you want to drive home. How this one line is different than every every other line in the poem. But really, it's up to you to decide the aesthetic of your poem, how you want it to look on the page, because the visual component of poetry is important, but you don't have to freak out about it too much. Just write the poem first if you're a beginner. Tip number 10, which I already kind of elaborated on, is to be concise. Your poem can be long and you can use repetition to prove a point, but every word matters. Your wording itself should be precise. And I have also talked about this in my other videos. It's especially relevant to poetry because poetry is a shorter form of writing and you really want every word and line to matter. The specific tip I gave in that video was that you wanna use strong words instead of mo modifying them with adjectives or adverbs. Instead of saying you're so happy, you would wanna say you are ecstatic. Instead of saying you ran fast, you would wanna say that you sprinted. Your words and your language should paint such a vivid picture that you don't need modification. Oh my God, there's a fly. I don't know if you can hear it, <laughs> but your words should be so strong that you don't need to modify them because the reader should instantly understand what you're talking about. Yeah, you can see the fly in this, whatever. If you analogize something to a cave, like if you wanted to say, my parents' home was a cave, you wouldn't need to say a silent and empty cave because that's what a cave epitomizes. So when you're writing, ask yourself, how can I paint the clearest and most vivid picture for my readers? Tip number 11 is to edit. So don't worry if your first draft sucks. Just be glad that you were diligent enough to get all the words onto the page. You wrote your first poem. Once you finish your first draft, you will have a better idea of tip number four, which was to um, understand your theme, where you were going, because maybe you started the poem with one idea and you kind of went off on a tangent, but you actually want to see that tangent through. So you rework certain lines to fit the new theme that the poem is going in the direction of. That's why I also say that you should let your mind just write first. When you're first writing the poem, sometimes you don't know where you're going until you get there. I know that sounds like a contradiction from my previous step, because if you do know where you're going, then you can follow that. But if a new idea comes to you, and this idea might be more powerful, more poignant, then don't stick to the first idea just because it's what you originally thought. Also with editing, you can add more detail to certain spots. Maybe you realize this is really important. I need to really make this clear. Or maybe you realize, mm, I don't need this line. It's not that relevant. So deleting is equally important as to adding more detail. I find myself often backspacing because I'm like, this, this isn't really adding, it's a useless line. After you finish your poem, that is when you can assess the first and the last lines and see if you like them. And I, I didn't wanna talk about this in the beginning of these tips because 
if you focus too much on the first line, you'll never start. Sometimes I start the poem already knowing what the first line is going to be, and then other times I start the poem already knowing what the last line is going to be, and other times I don't know either. I just write it and figure it out in the end. But then when I'm editing, I'll go back and make it clear. When you edit, you can really look at the first and last lines and ask yourself, is it opening the poem strong and closing it strong? The last line is more important than the first line because that's what's going to stick with the reader. So also in editing, don't be afraid to put the poem on the shelf, shelve it, and come back to it the next day. Let your thoughts marinate. When you come back, you might feel inspired and have a different idea than you originally had. Those are my 11 tips slash instruction. I'm going to end the video here because I feel like if I make a part two, it's gonna be more advanced poetry, but I think that this is a good starting point for someone who is new to writing. I don't wanna like confuse you guys even more. I hope these tips and this video was not too overwhelming. It's okay if you feel stuck, just keep trying. The more you practice, the better you will become. And not only that, but the more you write poetry, the more poetry ideas you will um, generate. Thank you for making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed the video and good luck on your poetry writing. Stay tuned for the next one and like, comment, subscribe.